discovered something that could be one of the most important things I've ever seen. The truth about the Knights Templar is about to bubble over. My family might fit into one Templar mystery that stretches all the way to America. This motivates me even more to want to get to the truth. If this is a pregnant Mary Magdalene, I want to know, who is that? Well, I don't believe that's the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus. I think that's Mary Magdalene and Jesus' child. history that we were all taught growing up is wrong. My name is Scott Walter, and I'm a forensic geologist. There's a hidden history in this country that nobody knows about. There are pyramids here, chambers, tombs, inscriptions. They're all over this country. We're going to investigate these artifacts and sites, and we're going to get to the truth. Sometimes history isn't what we've been told. For nearly a decade, I've been on a mission to prove the Knights Templar came to America to protect an explosive secret after they were driven from Europe by those who feared their power. I think that secret is represented by a symbol, the hooked X, that I've authenticated on five runestones here in the US. Recently, a tipster told me to come check out a new hooked X in Pennsylvania that I'd never heard of before. Frustratingly, it turned out to be a hoax. I've been able to conclude the others are authentic using forensic geology, and I'm always on the lookout for more. The hooked X is important because it represents a secret I think the Templars were trying to protect, and that some were even killed on Friday the 13th, 1307, when the Catholic Church who once endorsed them suddenly felt they were a threat. That secret? I think it's that Jesus and Mary Magdalene had a child, that Jesus had a bloodline. I think the Templars brought that secret and the bloodline itself to America. Now, I'm in France with my friend Steve, who's researching his family connection to the Templars, and with Alan Butler, a Templar historian. We're looking for more evidence to support my hypothesis and to investigate another symbol I think figures into this mystery. A hand symbol in the shape of an M that I believe stands for Mary Magdalene herself, whom they held in the highest regard. It's on nearly every statue and in every painting in this church. I know the M is important, and I think it's another link between the Templars and America. You know, guys, do you remember we were talking about the put down of the Knights Templar on Friday the 13th? If A is one, B is two, C is three, what number is M? 
13. 13. Do you think there's a coincidence there that they were put down on Friday the 13th? There's more. How many original colonies did we have in the United States? 13. 13. How many red and white stripes do we have on our flag? 13. Let me show you something else. You ever look carefully on the back of a $1 bill? Look here. If you count the number of stones levels in the pyramid, 13. You count the number of stars above the eagle's head, 13. 13 stripes, 13 arrows, 13 leaves, 13 letters in E Pluribus Unum. It's all over the back of the dollar bill. Why is the question? Because of this, because of Mary Magdalene and Jesus and their marriage. This sacred bloodline story has been kept alive through symbolism, starting with the Templars, weaving all the way into the Freemasons. It's all over our country and it's all over here in France. But there's something else. Look over there. What do you see? An eagle. <laughs> An eagle, just like the back of the dollar bill. Look at the date. 1776. 1776. That's the date of the Declaration of Independence. Here in a Templar church, there's another tie with the Freemasons in the United States. Last year, I was in DC researching our capital's connection to the Freemasons. I learned a lot about its symbolic layout, one that George Washington, who was a Mason himself, had a hand in. While I was there, I noticed a statue of Franklin Delano Roosevelt making what I think is the M sign. Like George Washington, he was a Mason too. A wealth of research, not just my own, suggests the Masons and Templars were brothers across time and that they shared secrets and symbols. Symbols like the M and the hooked X. So what I think is going on here, and no question in my mind, is that the secret story about the bloodline marriage between Jesus, Mary Magdalene, and their child went underground when the Templars were put down in 1307 and lived under the rose, sub rosa, in secret through signs and symbols like the M sign all the way up through to today. Guys, the place I want to go next is I want to go to Paris and I want to see where the final Grand Master of the Knights Templar, Jacques de Molay, was burned at the stake. Now, I don't think that's an accident that Jacques de Molay was arrested on Friday the 13th. I think that your church knew all about this whole 13 symbolism for Jesus and Mary Magdalene. I think they picked that date on purpose as a way of sending a message to the Templars and the Bloodline families, we're not putting up with this stuff. In a matter of about 175 years, the Templars went from being a rugged order of knights to arguably the most powerful economic and political force in Europe at the time. The Pope and the French King, Philip the Fair, became intimidated by the Templars and together they put an end to the knights in 1307. Yeah! Or did they? People say the Grand Master of the Order, Jacques de Molay, refused to reveal their secrets, even after he was tricked into coming to Paris to meet with the Pope. He was lured into a trap where he was arrested, charged with heresy, and burned to death. Well, guys, this is the spot. At this place, Jacques de Molay, last Grand Master of the Order of the Temple, was burned 18th of March, 1314. The idea of him being burned at the stake is a bit of a misnomer. The French king hated him so much that he actually had him spit-roasted over an extremely hot charcoal fire. 
to prolong the agony. He may have been hours dying. Oh, God, horrible. Over the seven years of his captivity, he was tortured repeatedly. They slow roasted his feet to the point where his toe bones literally fell out. And on the day of his execution here, he gathered up those toe bones and carried them here in a small box. Gruesome. Can you imagine? You know, one of the things that I heard was the King of France was denied entry into the Knights Templar, and that was part of his hatred for them. Absolutely. Uh, and of course, then there's the matter of money. The, the French crown, like most of the crowns of Europe, owed the Templars an absolute fortune. Of course, if you get rid of the people you owe the money to, you get rid of the debt. That's right, that's right. So you know about the alleged proclamation that Jacques de Molay made the day he died. He said, within a year of this day, I will stand before St. Peter with the King of France and the Pope. And of course, within the year, they both died. Do you think it was divine intervention that brought those two down, or do you think the Templars took them out? Oh, I think the Templars did for them. I do too. Murdered them. Yeah, yep. I think so. Wow. And let's not forget, guys, the Templars at this point had become so powerful that the church was getting worried. I think that the church was worried that the bloodline secrets were going to come out, and it was time to move against them before that happens. Even though Jacques de Molay was burned here in 1314, and many people think that the Templars came to an end at that time, that was hardly the case. There were many people and many groups that embraced the same ideology as the Templars. They simply went underground and continued on. You know, guys, I've got some pictures I want to show you. Should we duck in here real quick? Sure. Yeah, let's do that. Do you guys recognize these three ships? Yeah. I recognize the cross. This is the Nina the Pinta the Santa Maria. This is Columbus's famous voyage to the New World, right? And he's got the Knights Templar cross flying on the sails of all three ships. My second photo here, this is the mysterious sigla that Columbus began to use after he came back from the New World that first time. What do you see, Alan? I would say that's a hooked X. That is a hooked X, which is a symbol of the bloodline. Now, I've got one more for you. Take a look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. What do you see? The M. The yep. M sign. Now, if that isn't absolute proof that he was part of the squad and supporter of the Bloodline families and a member of the Knights Templar, I don't know what is. Take a look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> the M sign. Yep. Now, if that doesn't prove that Columbus was connected to the Templars and the Templars were connected to America, I don't know what does. This is Columbus's three ships flying the Knights of Christ cross. The Knights of Christ was the name the Knights Templar in Portugal changed their name to after the put down, but they basically continued on as usual. Now, the main seat of the Knights Templar Order in Portugal was Tomar, and that's a place that I'm going to go visit. You really ought to go there. I can't go with you, but go and see. It's fantastic. But how about you? Would you like to join me? Oh, I'd love to. Before heading to Portugal in search of more connections between the Templars and America, Steve and I had one more place to check out, a church connected to his family and connected to the Templars. The church is called St. Martin de Champs. I'm hoping it has more symbols to help validate my theory. Allegedly, underneath the church, which today is a museum, is a burial chamber of the Merovingians, a dynastic family said by some to be the physical carriers of Jesus' bloodline.
So Steve, tell me again, why is it that you're so excited about this church? The real reason it's important to me personally is it's direct evidence that my family is connected to the Templars, the Knights Templar. Wait a minute, you're saying now that this is the proof? Yes. That your family is connected to the Knights Templar? Absolutely. You're the guy that for all those years said there was no connection, there was no evidence. Now there's this evidence. This is your evidence. Yes, now okay. there's evidence. So what are we gonna see here? St. Martin de Champ was built in 1100. You can see it from here. Yeah. What you can see is the ground right below that part of the church is okay. a Merovingian burial vault, a necropolis from 700 AD. So the Merovingians, remember, this is the vine of Mary, the royal dynastic families of France that had all this power and people are pretty certain uh, carry the bloodline. Right, the Merovingian so, kings. What? That's the Statue of Liberty. What the hell's that doing here? Well, That's... I guess it's Bartoli, the guy who designed the Statue of Liberty, and he's from France. But what is it doing here at this church, your church, the one you wanted me to see? That's certainly odd to find the Statue of Liberty feet from a Merovingian burial vault. Well, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but I can tell you this. There's a reason that that thing is here at this church. I think you're right. We just have to figure it out. I think I know what it could be. Now, obviously there's a lot of symbolism in the Statue of Liberty, right? Yeah. We have the chain, the broken chains, which is freedom from oppression of the Roman church and the monarchies of mm -hmm. Europe. We have the light of liberty, which is always seeking light, seeking knowledge. We've got the seven points on the crown, which represents education and the seven classic arts and sciences. I didn't know that. And of course we have the tablet, When I was in New York, I took a helicopter and I flew around the Statue of Liberty because I wanted to look very closely at that tablet. Mm -hmm. You see those notches? Yeah, the keystone, that, right? That's symbolic of the Mark Master Mason's keystone, the very same right. notch keystone that I saw in the Newport Tower that I've been saying forever was built by the Templars and it's connected directly to the Freemasons. There's the connection there. And we see one more thing. What is it? I don't know. The M sign. She's holding the tablet. Oh my God. Making the M sign, which ties oh it all God. back to the bloodline families. That's so subtle. It's right there. And you don't Hidden notice in plain it. Sight. You don't notice it. If you stop and think about it, the Templars are connected to the Freemasons. The Freemasons are connected to the United States. They sure. founded the United States. What's the most iconic symbol of America? Of course, the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty in New York. And so maybe because we see the Statue of Liberty here, that it ties to the Merovingians that are right here under this church. And what that tells me is it's all connected to the bloodline. We weren't allowed to go underneath St. Martin de Champ. No surprise to me. If there were ever symbols or secrets connected to the Merovingian family or Jesus's bloodline down there, I'm sure the church got rid of them long ago. But finding a replica of the Statue of Liberty at a church that sits atop the rumored descendants of Jesus and Mary was like finding the eagle with 1776 on it at a church of the Templar Commandery. It can't be a coincidence. There's no denying that some of America's most sacred symbols are found in places sacred to the Templars and those who shared their ideals. And it makes me wonder what we'll find in Tomar, the biggest Templar stronghold in Portugal.
Well, Steve, if we're going to find more symbols and signs uh, dealing with the Knights Templar, I mean, if they're not here until tomorrow, I don't know where else to look. Yeah, this was from what I've heard, one of the most important Templar sites in all of Europe. Tomar, the biggest Templar stronghold in Portugal, is a town founded by the Templar Grand Master Galdim de Pais in the 12th century. Walking around here, it feels very old world, like a place steeped in secrets and tradition. And there's Templar references everywhere. In shops, on sidewalks, there's even a hotel named after them. I have to think there are hidden symbols here, somewhere in the deepest reaches of the city, that will prove that the Knights Templar were protecting the secret of Jesus' bloodline and that they took that secret all the way to America. Look at the tower, the eight-sided tower. Where have we seen that before? We've seen that a lot on this trip. We saw it at St. Martin de Champ. Yep. Of course, it goes back to the Newport Tower in Rhode Island. The Newport Tower exactly has eight points. That's cool. Now, if you take a look at the Templar Cross, uh -huh. you see how it flares at the end and there's two points? Yeah. If you take the Templar Cross and you put it inside the tower, those eight points on the cross will touch the eight columns inside the tower. Look at that clock. I've been staring at that thing and I think I know what I'm seeing. If you look in the upper left, that's a woman. And in the upper right, that's got to be Jesus. Jesus and Mary Magdalene. And look below them, bones, including the skull and crossbones below Jesus and the bones of Mary below. You know, I've seen that symbol on the right all over Scotland on Templar burial sites. The skull and crossbone, the Jolly Roger, which is a symbol of the pirates, which were the fugitive Templars. While the origins of the Jolly Roger have been debated, there's no question the Templars were among the first to fly the skull and crossbones flag. The question is, why? I think the skull and crossbones could represent the bones of Jesus and Mary Magdalene, bones the Templars may have had in their possession. The Jolly Roger, could that represent their bones that the Templars have? During the First Crusade, the Templars went to Jerusalem. I think they took those bones as insurance against the church. Don't mess with us, because we've got something very important. That is very cool. You know what else is interesting is that symbol over there, the, the Templar cross above the globe, that, I believe, is the one that the Portuguese think is the most perfect symbol of Templarism to them. To the Portuguese? Yeah. Well, think about it for a second, Steve. Many of the great explorers launched their voyages from right here yeah. in Portugal out into the world, right? The Templars were the best explorers, and they were exploring the world. And if they explored the world, they certainly went to America. What started for me 15 years ago as an investigation into a mysterious runestone in Minnesota brought me across the Atlantic looking for clues to who might have carved it. That's when I learned the hooked X, a symbol on the stone, was directly connected to the Knights Templar. Since then, I've learned a lot more about what I think that symbol means. That it's a secret symbol representing Jesus' bloodline. The revelation that Jesus could have had descendants is explosive, and it's a theory that some people just won't accept. I recently looked at a hooked X carving in the Pennsylvania woods that was a hoax. Something I think was created by someone afraid that what I'm uncovering is true. Someone who wanted to embarrass me if I said it was real. But forensic geology doesn't lie. And now I'm in Portugal to find even more evidence to convince the skeptics. So far in European churches, I've only seen a hooked X in one that's connected to the Templars, Roslyn Chapel in Scotland, the church made famous by the Da Vinci Code. But I never give up hope I'll find another. And since Tomar is a city built by the Templars, this would be the place.
So this is the church that Guillaume de Pius built for the Templars to worship in, right? Santa Maria de Olaval. Aldean de Pius. This must be where he's buried. Hey, look at the date. October 13, 1895. <laughs> and I, I'd be willing to bet that was a Friday that year. October 13th, probably on a Friday, 1895. Must have been when that plaque was dedicated in honor of when the Knights Templar Order was put down by the King of France. And that list shows 22 Grand Masters of the Portuguese Knights Templar that I heard were actually buried here. In this church? On this site, and I think that's what these markers are. Let's look go around. take a look around, see if we can find them. Grave slab there, grave slab there. They're all over the floor. <laughs> look at this one. That one's beautiful. Beautiful. Scott. The five-pointed star. The pentagram, right? To the Templars, the pentagram was sacred because what that pentagram represents, the five-pointed star, it was the physical manifestation of the goddess in the heavens, the planet Venus. So when you draw the five-pointed star, what you're actually doing is tracing the movement of Venus in the heavens. And if you look inside the middle, of that pentagram, you see the Pentagon, just like in America, in Washington, D.C. The Pentagon, I don't think it's an accident that it has five sides in that same shape. It too is symbolic of the goddess of Mary Magdalene. And who was the person that designed that and made sure it was in the exact spot that he wanted? Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And he was a Mason. To the Templars, I think the five-pointed star was the most sacred symbol of all to them. Even more important than the hook deck, symbolic of the bloodline, even more important than the M sign we've seen all over Europe. Scott, what do you think's up with this tower? You know, I don't know. Uh, excuse me, uh, Valish English? Yes, I can speak English. Oh, great. Do you know anything about this tower? Supposedly, there's a tunnel underneath that goes to the castle on the hill, the Templar castle. Really? Yes. How about the church? Any interesting things you know about it? The only thing I know is that this star and this rose are here on the church and in the castle as well. You know, I didn't notice when we first walked in because it's so deteriorated, but outside the five-pointed star is a five-petaled rose. And the number eight is important. There are eight columns, eight steps inside, but that's the only thing I know. Hey, listen, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks for your help. Bye. We should go back. We got to go back. Let's count these steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Look at the columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very cool. Hey, you know what? There's eight windows across the top. Right above the columns, and at the same level as the five-pointed star. Is that cool or what? The number eight is important because it's the number of times that Venus, which is a symbol for Mary Magdalene in the heavens, goes around the sun. The question is, is it the only symbol here?
Scott, I think you need to come over here right now. Hey, Steve, are you seeing Mason's marks? You need to come over here right now. You know, we've seen a lot of symbols on this trip. Yeah? We have yet to see that one. What? It's a hooked X. You gotta be kidding me. That's a hooked X. What the heck? What the hell? Shut up. And it's in this church. <laughs> a hooked X in this church? I mean, we have seen all the symbolism. That's the one thing we haven't seen, is my hooked X, and there it is. In one of the most important Templar cities in Europe. With all the symbolism that we have been talking about that connects the whole thread together, what was the one thing that was missing? The hooked X. The symbol of the bloodline families that we find in America, and we find it here. This is Latin, I believe. That's not a Latin character. No. Well, it's out of place. It's a number. It's a Roman character. Mm -hmm. It's a Roman number. It says 10th, but it's got a hook on it because it has dual meaning. It has a practical function, but it's also symbolic of the bloodline families because if it's used as a letter, if it's used as a number, or if it stands all by itself, it symbolizes the bloodline. What is the importance of this here? I, I, I mean, I'm still trying to get my head around it, but the importance of this is incredible. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. You know what? This is no Da Vinci Code. This is real life. It's over here in Portugal, and it's in America. This whole thing started with the Kensington runestone and the hook decks, and it's all brought me here to this church where everything, all the symbolism and all the factual evidence is woven together and it can't be taken apart. And the hooked X is right there. I'm speechless. This is amazing. I mean, the only time, I will say this, the only time that we see the hooked X is it's used by either the Knights Templar order in medieval times or by Freemasons. Guillaume de Pace built this church. He knew this was here, and he was Grand Master. And since Portugal was the launching point for all these explorations, these voyages of exploration to lands unknown, because of the hooked X being found in America, we know at least one place that they went, don't we? Yeah. The United States of America. Yeah. What is finding the hooked X here? mean to you? Well, the hooked X is what started me on this whole journey. It was critical. Everybody said it never existed. Well, guess what? It did exist. It's a symbol of the bloodline families. Right here in this church, this Templar church, this little symbol on this column here, it's validation of everything I've done. And it also proves to me, with the Masonic connections, that it was the Freemasons who founded our country using the idealism and the symbolism represented by the hooked X. We've gone to a new country. We found it again. I would venture to say we're not done finding the hooked X symbol. Well, if there's one thing that I've learned, you're not gonna find anything unless you get off your butt and look. And we came here and found it. Nice going, Congrats, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Everything I saw in France and Portugal tells me that what I've been trying to prove for almost a decade is rooted in something real that the Templars came to America to protect the secret of Jesus' bloodline. 
I've seen the symbols and signs of the Templars that I think represent that secret in Europe. And they are consistent with the symbols and signs I've seen in America. The M's on the statues and in portraits. The hooked X representing Jesus, Mary Magdalene, and their child found on pillars and runestones. They're clues that can't be ignored. My research is controversial, but I've never given up. And now I believe it's paying off. People are paying attention, and one man in Massachusetts just emailed me about his discovery of a new hooked X on an artifact I've seen before, but that he says I need to see again. It's called the Westford Knight. Many people believe it depicts a Templar knight holding a sword. Over the years, it's become very difficult to see because it's exposed to the elements in one of the harshest climates in the country. Some believe the knight is Prince Henry Sinclair, a distant relative of Steve Sinclair, who was just with me in France. As the story goes, Prince Henry made a voyage to the New World in the 14th century with the Templar's treasure and secrets in tow. I just hope the carving I'm going to see isn't a fake, like the one I examined in Pennsylvania before I went to France. Hey, Dave. Hey, nice to meet you, Scott. You're the guy that emailed me, right? I am. Well, I'm excited that you found this symbol. I can't wait to see it. But um, I got to hear the story. My understanding is the Westford Knight Committee was trying to preserve this site. And what was it that made you notice this new thing in the first place? Well, Shane, my colleague, and I had come to the site to start uh, power washing and start preserving it. He said, hey, take a look at this. So I looked at it, we wiped it a little more, I dried it a little bit, and uh, I said, wow, what is that? And, and Shane said, hey, I know what that is. It's, that's a really important symbol. I don't think anyone had ever seen it at this site before. I can vouch for that. <laughs> I've been here about a half dozen times. Yeah, I thought, wow, this is something that's pretty significant, not only to the committee, but probably to you, Scott. Well, based on what I understand so far, you're absolutely right. So. Where is this thing? I'm ready to take a look at it. All right, let me show you. Let's get in here. All right, so where is it? So you're familiar with the carving already, oh, but yeah. if you just follow the blade, it's right here. Well, I see something here. If there is an authentic hooked X on this stone, meaning one that was carved at the time I believe Templars were making voyages to America, then I can add it to the list of hooked X runestones in the United States that I believe are legit. So far, there's the Kensington runestone in Minnesota dated to 1362. Then there are the Spirit Pond runestones in Maine and the Narragansett runestone in Rhode Island. But what I want to know is can we now add the Westford Knight to the list? Oh, I see. <laughs> so I got two dots right here. We got a line coming here, a line here, and a hook right there. My first impression, it's not modern, no way. I mean, if you look at these carvings here, we know these are man-made. These have been weathering for a long time. So do you know what this means? No. Based on my initial impression, you've got a hooked X here. This could have been made by the Knights Templar. I mean, this is incredible. I, 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 I'm speechless. because I was almost the victim of a hoax in Pennsylvania involving a hooked X. 
I went on to study the Westford carving in more detail. Studying the carving using a new technique called reflective transformation imaging left no question in my mind. It's legit. I've been searching for the truth about our past for years. Not just whether the Templars voyaged to America, but whether people from all over the world made it here centuries ago, leaving clues behind. Rock walls, rock carvings, hidden artifacts, and newly discovered documents all tell me there's a lot we don't know about our past. When I look at everywhere I've been and think about everything I've seen, I know it's more than a coincidence that links together some of the sites, symbols, and signs I've found. We may not know everything about how they connect, but one day, we will.